Oh, we were hoping for a warm, dry day to take the mass down. And we um, got it. Well, we got a dry day. It's a beautiful sunny day. Temperature's about 35, so, you know, fingers are going to be cold. I'm going to keep my gloves on while I can. First step we have to take is to uh, loosen the after lower shrouds and get our harness set up. So that's what I'm going to start with right now. When you're loosening your shrouds or tightening them either way, uh, don't just grab, stick a screwdriver in here and start turning. The, the right way to do that is to hold on to the turnbuckle. Hold on to both parts of it so that it doesn't untwist the wire. You don't want to unlay the wire while you're turning it. So some people do it with the screwdriver down here. Some people do it with the wrench up here. It doesn't really matter as long as you hold on to one side, to both sides of it, so you don't un unlay the wire, twist it against the lay. So this is loose enough right now for me to get that pin out. I'm going to do the other side. Now the whole reason we're able to do this without hiring a crane is because Lea Lea is equipped with a factory option. It's called a tabernacle mass step. In other words, the mast, it's a deck step mast, and it's mounted not directly to the deck, but it's mounted on this stainless steel hinge that allows the mast to tip forward down into the pulpit. Uh, they do this because in, in Europe, um, boats are used in the canals. You have to get under the bridges, so you frequently have to drop the mast and then put it back up again in order to negotiate the canals in Europe. So that's why that's there, but it also makes it very, very convenient for us. We can take the mast down without hiring a crane to do it for us. Not all Vegas have this. This is a factory option. Lea Lea happened to have it when I got it, got the boat. And so we we're just lucky in that regard. Not all Vegas will come with this, though. Um, if but you could add it, right? But you can add it. All it really is is a stainless steel step. It's made out of, uh, uh, it looks like it's 3 sixteenths stock, 3 sixteenths of an inch stock, yeah. uh, whatever the metric equivalent is. You might mention is. that black spacer that's in there. That's there for a reason. Oh, this? It's yeah. actually blue. <laughs> yeah. This is a Delrin spacer that we put on. When we hauled out in 96, uh, we had corrosion around the base of the mast here. So um, we cut off an inch of the mast, or maybe a little more than an inch there, maybe, yeah. Anyhow, we cut off an, this much of the mast, and to get the mast back up to the total length, we put the spacer underneath there. We had that fabricated and put it under there. It's just made of uh, uh, Delrin. We've been using these little guys here. They're called pin wraps. I don't know Instead if they're of... still available. I don't know if they're still available. We got them as samples way back in, uh, we were in San Francisco, I think, at the time. Yeah. And uh, anyway, they're, they're, what they are is a Velcro strap with a, yes. with a cotter pin. And you don't need to spread the cotter pin. Uh, we've crossed the Pacific twice with these things on here. Yeah, they work They really just well. slip through here to lock, your, uh, lock the turnbuckle, slip it through the hole like you would a cotter pin, and then wrap it around like that. That's all there is to it, and they, it comes off just like that without any muscle or any fuss, and it's reusable. So, not like uh, not like cotter pins, but it just makes the whole process just that much quicker and less wasteful. Now, the purpose of the harness is to stabilize the mast while it's coming down, the mast and the boom while it's coming down. And it doesn't really have to support a lot of strain, it's just here to stabilize it. So, and Bruce Bingham in one of his books, I think it was Bruce Bingham, diagrammed a, uh, a permanent harness made out of, made out of wire and uh, some stainless steel plates that you put on here and leave it permanently. So if you're doing a lot of canals and you need to get the mast up and down often, you would do that. So, but what we're doing here is a little different. 
So this is perfectly adequate for our purposes. It just wants to keep the mast from flopping to the side or the boom from flopping around too much. And we just tie this up and position it so that this is really close to the pivot point of the, of the hinge. It takes a little, a little adjustment. And if we were doing it more often, I would make up a better setup, but this does the job. Okay, we've got the uh, first part of the harness hooked up to the upper shrouds. Those are designed to keep the mast from tipping either way as we lower it. First time I did this, I did it without them. It can be done. You have a, a spotter holding the mast and holding the boom up, but after that I read this book by, I think it was Bruce Bingham, anyway, and he, I saw the drawings of the harness, so I made my own, and it works a lot better this way. This part of the harness hooks to the boom, and this is to keep the boom from flopping from one to the side while, it's, while the uh, mast is going down. Okay, and that is attaching where? This attaches to the lower harness over the top of the lifelines. Blood on your pants, Chuck? Yeah. <laughs> Going down here. Yeah, I nick my thumb. All right. So what do we got going? Harness is all uh, ready to go. Yeah, or? the harness uh, that will support the uh, mast and boom as it moves forward, keep it from flopping from side to side. This is all in place. Um, the mast is supported from going forward now by the backstay and by the uh, main sheet, which is attached to. The uh, halyard, and that's keeping the mast from going forward. Well, now what we have to do is disconnect the backstay to free that up. Once the backstay is undone, all we need to do is lower the mast forward. Cool. Just waiting for our uh, yeah, waiting for third our, uh, helper here. Yeah. And enjoying the sunshine. It's a little chilly, but man, is it ever pretty out? Yeah, Look it at is. This. Beautiful day. Let it 
fly. Still holding on to the boom here. the spreaders if you can to keep them from flopping around. Eventually I'm gonna have to get this mast off of here and put it someplace where I can work on it. I can put it right there. Well, success. We got the mass down without hurting anybody or breaking anything. <laughs> Woohoo! Just a few drops of blood. <laughs> Just a few drops of blood, not much. What a beautiful day. We couldn't have asked for much better. Beautiful day. However, uh, the rig is in worse shape than I thought. So. Well, we'll have to go through. You said you noticed some water in our uh, 
in our mast headlight. Our mast light. headlight. Yeah. That's looking well, pretty that's yucky. that's no big deal. But, oh well. We then I'll uh, fire off an e email to Brian down in uh, Port Townsend, Brian Toss. We've been talking about this already, so. Have a little discussion about the rig. Maybe doing something interesting there too, who knows? Yep. Cool. Well, yeah, we're going to be doing something interesting with it. Uh, but now we're, we're okay to take that main bulkhead out and get it over to Andy and, um, and start really start working, really on, the working on the interior. Sweet! All right. <sighs> done for the day? Uh, we have to clean up, put the tools away, but yeah, we're, I'm done. <laughs> My back is killing me. <laughs> Old man. <laughs> Beautiful day in paradise.